Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today we'll be taking a look at some of our favorite outfits as worn by James Bond. <laughs> Since 1962, with the debut of Dr. No in cinemas, James Bond has gained the reputation of being one of the most stylish spies to grace the silver screen. Simply say his name, and I'm sure it will evoke the image of a suave tuxedo and a smoking gun. Indeed, donning this signature outfit is a rite of passage for any actor who gets to portray the British secret agent. And whilst just like us, Bond gets to enjoy his fair share of black tie outfits. Now, of course, throughout the many decades of the James Bond franchise, the character and the actors who portray him have been subject to the changes in fashion. Which means that some of his looks really should have been for his eyes only. Now we've already evaluated the James Bond style rules, which you can incorporate into your wardrobe here. And if you want to get your black tie game up to James Bond levels of cool, we've got you covered. So for today's video, we've selected our favorite looks from across the Bond series. And just before we get started, please know, we're not going to be ranking these looks. So there's no particular order to this list. And if you have a favorite Bond actor, we all do. It's worth sticking around for the entire list to see what style tips you can pick up from across the series. As Bond is a well-traveled man, we've selected a number of outfits ranging from casual to formal. Because we believe that each look has its own classic style merits, which you can incorporate into your own wardrobe. So grab a martini and let's jump into our first pick. Now we're starting off with No Time to Die, the 25th film in the franchise and Daniel Craig's last Bond film, or so we think. A lot of Daniel Craig's suits over his five Bond films have been provided by Tom Ford. Unfortunately, most of these suffer from that too tight look that may have been made popular by Mr. Bond himself in the early 2010s. And I'm sure you'll agree this isn't a very elegant look. Thankfully, in No Time to Die, we see Bond wearing a sand-colored suit while in Italy, and we believe this fits him much better. Now, the suit itself is an unstructured two-piece needle cord suit from Massimo Alba, an Italian designer which makes sense in this setting. The shirt is a cornflower blue button-down style with barrel cuffs, and Bond will accessorize this outfit with a pair of dove gray box cloth braces from Albert Thurston, a maroon silk tie with a repeating blue tile pattern by Alexander Oak and a pair of brown moccasin toe suede chocolate boots from Drex of London. Overall, this outfit is a modern take on how you can wear a suit and keep it from looking stiff and too formal and a bit more relaxed. By keeping the suit unstructured, it will naturally drape in a more casual way, aided by the choice of the needle cord cloth, which is much finer than the traditional corduroy, therefore providing a better versatility to the suit. The addition of a similarly casual shirt and footwear keep everything on the same formality scale, whilst adding a contrasting tie helps elevate the outfit nicely, as the tie is woven in a textured silk as opposed to a traditional flat weave tie. And furthermore, the repeating blue tile in the tie helps to complement the blues found in both the shirt and in the braces. All of these elements work together to create a very coherent outfit. You can steal the style tip from Bond by adding a relaxed tie to your casual outfits, such as a silk barrette or shantung silk. All of these are available at Fort Belvedere. Next up, returning to Skyfall, where we see Bond at his ancestral home in Scotland, at Skyfall Lodge. Now, Scotland is famously cold and wet. And with this in mind, Bond dresses appropriately for the weather on the moors. Perhaps the most memorable piece of clothing is his barber jacket. Now you can take a look at what we think of the iconic wax jacket in our Is It Worth It video here. Now the jacket in question was actually a collaboration between Barber and Japanese designer Tokido Yoshida, which had a lot of extra features like a removable hood, as well as a storm flap behind the buttons to help keep the elements out. Following the release of Skyfall and the inclusion of the jacket in the film's climax, any remaining jackets were snapped up by both Bond and clothing aficionados alike. Barber quickly responded to the demand and has since released updated versions of this jacket. You can still add a piece of James Bond clothing to your wardrobe. The jacket itself is styled similarly to a odd jacket or hunting jacket. Probably more like a hunting jacket then. It's single breasted with a button closure. It also features a collar and lapels which can be worn down to emulate an odd jacket or flipped up, as Bond does, to reveal a throat latch. Also two flapped bellows pockets at the hips. 
and it's crafted from the traditional olive green barber waxed cotton and with leather trimmings and barber tartan lining. Underneath, Bond wears a striking blue cashmere sweater from English brand In Peel. Now, much like the jacket, the popularity of this outfit means that the sweater is also still in production today and sold by In Peel under the color Blue Wave. The collar of an off-white Henley can be seen beneath the sweater, and a dark brown patterned Tom Ford scarf is tucked into the neckline to keep everything in place. Now, keeping with the countryside clothing, Bond wears a pair of very dark brown corduroy trousers. These are cut in a five pocket style, just like jeans, and a pair of sturdy brown scotch grain leather boots from Crockett and Jones. Now, these boots feature day night rubber soles, as well as storm belting and brogue detailing. Now, this outfit works so well for the cold and damp country setting. Everything has been chosen for the sake of practicality, all without compromising on style, by selecting colors which draw inspiration from the landscape such as browns, olive greens, and blues. Bond is able to achieve some natural camouflage, just like with the principles of historical country clothing. Even though this outfit is so well suited for this rural setting, there's no denying that certain elements of this outfit can be applied to a casual day about town outfit. After all, this look is much more elegant than tactical gear. Returning to a more formal look for Daniel Craig, we now turn to Quantum of Solace. Perhaps not Craig's most beloved Bond film, but I think we can all agree that the opening car chase scene is pretty epic. Here in Bolivia, we see Bond wearing a two-piece dark brown mohair blend suit and a hopsack weave. The trousers have turnips, side adjusters, and a slim cut. But it isn't as slim as the suits he would go on to wear in Skyfall and Spectre. The jacket has a few details which will add some interest to the menswear enthusiast, such as a ticket pocket, five button working cuffs, with the button closest to the wrist left undone signature Tom Ford style a curved breast pocket, and closed in a three-roll two fashion. This is where the suit is cut to accommodate a three-button closure, but the lapels happen to be rolled in a particular way, which means you only close the middle button. Now, while all these details make for an exciting garment, it's worth noting that it's very easy to be caught up in all the extra things that go into making a suit, as you can find out in this video. Now, to accompany the suit, Bond chooses a plain white cotton poplin shirt, featuring a classic spread collar and double cuffs and a silk tie, and a micro pattern of dark brown and tan squares. This gives the illusion of depth and shifting tones. The look is finished off with a pair of black quarter brogue Oxford shoes, the now discontinued Philip model from Churches, and a classic white pocket square. Now what we enjoy most about this outfit is the understated simplicity. It goes to show how a classic white shirt and pocket square can serve as a base to let the other elements of your outfit shine through. And the tone on tone elements of a darker brown suit and a lighter brown tie round out this outfit wonderfully. Normally black shoes with a brown suit are a big no-no, but in this case the formality of the suit's fabric, fit, and color all work together to make the black shoes a perfect choice. While the addition of broguing decreases the formality of the shoes just a touch, so they fit with the rest of the outfit. We now travel to Cuba, where we find Pierce Brosnan's James Bond in a casual ensemble and die another day. Much like Quantum of Solace, this film is one of the more divisive in the franchise, with some enjoying it and others not so much. Now, regardless of whether you're fans of the film or not, Bond wears a number of great outfits throughout the film. Whoa, perhaps not that outfit. For our pick, we're going for the beach where Bond sports when visiting a bar in Havana. Now, the hero piece here is the deep blue linen shirt with light blue floral design. Although Bond typically isn't seen in florals, the outfit is quite appropriate given its coastal location. After all, any good spy and gentleman will know how to dress appropriately for their surroundings. The shirt was specifically crafted for the film by the Italian tailoring house Brioni, who are the main supplier of clothes for many of Brosnan's Bond films. Now with this in mind, the shirt features some intriguing details, including a one-piece collar in the camp or Cuban style, half-length sleeves, which stop at the elbow, a rounded breast pocket, and side vents. Also a straight hem at the bottom, meaning the shirt is designed to be worn untucked as Bond does. The shirt's florals are embroidered rather than printed, which provides a vivid, well-defined pattern. So although at first glance, it looks like a stylish Hawaiian shirt, the details set this aside as a unique piece of Bond clothing. Underneath the shirt is a plain white cotton undershirt, which allows the shirt to be worn with only one or two buttons fastened, all while retaining some modesty. Keeping with the classic family of blues, Bond adds a pair of navy linen trousers to the ensemble, again likely by Brioni, rounding the look off with a pair of brown suede chukka boots and a pair of Perso sunglasses crafted specially for the film, model PE2672-S. 
First of all, are a classic choice of sunglasses and be fitting for Bond. Take a look at our exploration of the brand here. Altogether, this ensemble has a lot of great styling points, which is why it's made our list. The different shades of navy and blue within the ensemble keep things interesting without being too distracting, creating a refined aesthetic which works well for Bond's warm weather wardrobe, as it will yours. Back to business with our next look, sticking with Pierce Brosnan and the film Tomorrow Never Dies. This look sees Bond performing some espionage inside of a printing press in Hamburg, Germany. Under the usual alias of Traveling Businessman, we see a charcoal worsted flannel suit take center stage. Like the blue floral shirt before, we see that this suit was provided by Brioni. The suit is single-breasted with a strong three-button closure, although we usually see the suit open to allow Bond more movement. It has well-padded shoulders and a fuller cut than what we might be normally seeing today. However, the suit fits Brosnan very well and doesn't look too large or too slim. And hey, it just goes to show that a well-fitting suit can be comfortable enough to drive your car by remote in the back seat. The suit's trousers have a medium rise, double pleats, tapered leg, and turnips, which helps them drape wonderfully. At his waist, we can see a black leather belt with a gold tone rounded buckle, which looks to be the spitting image of our Fort Belvedere belt system. Proving he's as sartorially skilled as a super spy, Bond pairs his black leather belt with black Oxford shoes. A shirt and tie round out this outfit wonderfully. Both were made by English bespoke shirt makers Turnbull and Nasser, who have a long history with James Bond, who provided shirts for Sean Connery's Bond all the way back in 1962. Brosnan's shirt has a spread collar and double cuffs, and it's crafted in a royal blue Oxford cotton. Choosing this shade of blue brings a warmth to the outfit and complements Brosnan's complexion better than a white shirt would. The Geometry tie is finished in shades of navy and copper and centering around light blue squares. From a distance, the tie looks to be a bit of a deep rust color, which pairs nicely against the blue shirt. The light blue squares only further cementing the harmony of colors. Now, although at first glance, this look appears to only be simple business attire, you can see that Bond is still able to enjoy menswear detailing without being too flashy. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that we're big fans of a navy blazer, and it seems that Mr. Bond is no different. We see Bond wearing a nautically inspired look in the Monte Carlo Bay. The navy blazer, with its military origins, is quite fitting for the James Bond character. As in the canonical fiction, he is a naval commander. Now, our resident Q, Preston, explains the difference between a navy blazer and an odd jacket in this video. This particular blazer is quite traditional. It's finished in a true dark navy hopsack wool, has a double-breasted fastening and a 6x2 style, and it features brass buttons throughout. Perhaps because of the hot Monaco weather, or to help him better move around, Bond wears the jacket open. Perhaps a trick he picked up from Raphael. With the blazer, we see a pair of beige tropical wool trousers. Much like the previous looks trousers, they are pleated and feature turnips. And again, we see a leather belt with a gold tone rounded buckle, this time in brown leather. Now this look is brought together with the inclusion of a French blue shirt, but this tone of blue is darker than the traditional light blue we see in dress shirts. But keep in mind, it isn't as dark as the navy blazer and therefore it's providing a good level of contrast, whereas a white shirt may be too contrasting. The shirt has single button cuffs, which is the best choice in formality when paired in this outfit. Bond finishes the look with a pair of chestnut brown full brogue Oxford shoes. Chetwin model from Churches. Now these are spot on for this outfit as the Oxford construction keeps things smart, with the formality being balanced out by the broguing and the more casual color. This outfit truly is a classic menswear ensemble. I'm sure the inspiration for this ensemble came from the 1930s. Now essentially, this is a great outfit that is easy to wear, especially so in warmer climates, and it will always look timeless. Moving on now to Roger Moore's tenure as James Bond. As we previously stated, not every Bond look is a good one. Unfortunately though, even though Moore had the longest consecutive run as James Bond, with seven films under his belt from 1973 to 1985, the majority of his outfits were just too fashion forward. That being said, there are still a few gems to be found. So our next pick is a navy suit and Pelito overcoat from Live and Let Die. The Pelito is a classic overcoat and is much enjoyed by Raphael, as you can see in his video here. The coat itself is finished in navy cashmere and has a matching velvet collar. The suit worn underneath is also navy, single-breasted construction with worsted flannel. Overall, the appearance presented is smart, clean, and professional. This look is a true signature Bond touch with the shirt details. Once again, we see a light blue cotton with a spread collar, but it's the cuffs where things get interesting. A Bond style staple since Dr. No, we see the inclusion of a cocktail cuff, a style of cuff somewhere between a double cuff and a single barrel cuff. Bond is famous for preferring this kind of cuff on his shirts. 
possibly to keep the practicality of a cuff that buttons with the formality of a double folded cuff. Now with the shirt, we see a regimental striped tie in navy, red, and white. The tie itself was made by British clothiers Benson and Clegg, and it's actually still available to purchase today. And it looks like it may have been the inspiration for the club's tie that the Asians wear in the Kingsman franchise. And you can find our reviews on the clothes in the Kingsman franchise here. Rounding out Bound's outfit, we can see a pair of black leather tassel loafers, which are a good choice considering he's just arrived from a long flight, and a matching pair of leather gloves. Now you know we're fans of colorful gloves at the Gentleman's Gazette, but seeing as Bond does have to fit in with the business crowd, the black gloves do make sense here. We just think a pair of medium gray lamb Napa gloves would be a great choice for this outfit. Moving on now, we see Sean Connery's James Bond in Kentucky in the 1964 film Goldfinger. Although at this point in the film, Bond has been held captive by Auric Goldfinger, there's no denying that Bond still looks at his best. Now for many, this suit is the quintessential James Bond outfit. And as we're learning today, the devil is in the details. Now the suit is a three-piece tropical wool suit crafted by London tailor Anthony Sinclair. Now this was Connery's tailor for the majority of the time he played James Bond. Now until high definition re-releases of this film, it was widely believed that this was a pick and pick wool or a shark skin. In reality, the suit is actually a very fine Glen check pattern, which is subtle enough to look like a solid color from a distance. The suit features pleated trousers with a medium rise, a six button waistcoat, and notch lapel. A single versus jacket with a two button closure, all with flapping hips and a ticket pocket. In the suit's breast pocket, we can see a classic white linen pocket square in a straight or a TV fold. This complements the white and double cuff shirt. Underneath the spread collar, Bond wears a dark navy knitted silk tie tied in a foreign hand knot. This is a great way to balance formalities if, like Bond, you don't know what the dress code is going to be. Although hopefully you're not planning on being captured by an evil megalomaniac. Bond rounds the outfit off with a pair of black leather two eyelet derby shoes and dark gray socks. Now we love this Bond outfit here. It's full of little details for menswear enthusiasts without being too fussy and sits wonderfully within the realm of being neither too formal or too casual. This also makes it a highly covetable Bond look. Now sticking with Goldfinger, we now find Bond in the countryside for this ensemble. And what at first might look like a brown suit is actually an odd jacket and trouser combination. Here we see Bond sporting a browned barley corn tweed hacking jacket, characterized by a two button closure, a single vent at the back, and slanting pockets. The hacking jacket is an item of clothing with firm countryside roots, making it perfect for a day at the country club or for a drive on the Swiss Alps. With the jacket, Bond wears a pair of fawn colored cavalry twill trousers. These are cut with side adjusters and frog mouth pockets, which further enhance this outfit's sporty details. The shirt is an off-white with a very light broken gray stripe, which is very hard to spot on film, but it helps to enforce the casual nature of this outfit. It has double cuffs, which Bond wears with his chain link cufflinks worn reversed for some reason. Maybe he hasn't watched our definitive guide to cufflinks just yet. We'll let you off the hook this time 007. This look is finished off in a similar fashion to the previous outfit from Goldfinger, with a knitted tie and two eyelet derby shoes, although this time the tie is brown, and the shoes are brown suede with rubber soles. Although this outfit is a fantastic display as to how a traditional countryside outfit can be refined to be worn in both country and town settings, and beautifully demonstrates how wearing an odd jacket and trouser combination can be done with such panache. Now if you like this particular look, you can check out the British clothing brand Mason & Sons for faithful reproductions of both the trousers and the jacket. And you can also find a range of knitted ties, a Bond style staple in our shop. Lastly, but certainly not least, return to a moment where a James Bond outfit is iconically revealed. Yes, I'm sure we'd all hope to look that good after some nighttime espionage. Now for our last pick, it had to be a black tie outfit. And we couldn't think of a better choice than this ivory jacket from Goldfinger. Set in the tropics, the scene we see this jacket in marks it as an iconic choice for warm weather evening wear. And the jacket is most likely crafted from a tropical wool. Now perhaps the most famous ivory jacket to be seen on the silver screen is the one Humphrey Bogart wore in 1942's Casablanca. And while Bonds is no less elegant, there are some unique details which make his stand out. First of all, Bond opts for peaked lapels on his dinner jackets. And unlike a black dinner jacket or a tuxedo, these lapels aren't finished in silk or satin. Instead, they are self-faced, or the same fabric as the rest of the jacket, as the silk lapels on a dinner jacket help differentiate it from that of a regular suit jacket. But an ivory dinner jacket is already very different from a suit jacket, so the silk facings in this sense aren't required. The peak lapels also provide a strong formal silhouette, and the perfect opportunity for a red carnation to be worn through the buttonhole. Closing in a single-breasted style, we can see a single mother-of-pearl button at the waist. 
waist, with four matching buttons at each cuff. And the jacket has no vents on the back to maintain the same sleek silhouette that a dinner jacket should. With the jacket, Bond wears plain black trousers, again most likely of a tropical wool. And while the trousers don't have the traditional silk gallon stripe at the sides, this fits Bond's understated aesthetic quite well. The white dress shirt worn here is quite interesting as well. It has a very unique satin stripe which runs throughout the shirt itself. This pattern is emphasized in the pleated front and adds an element of intrigue to the outfit. Finishing things off, Bond wears a black satin batwing shaped bow tie. Skipping the cummerbund and pocket square for a clean and unfussy look. This outfit is truly a Bond classic, being used in the 2005 video game from Marsha with Love and serving as the inspiration for the evening wear in 2015's Spectre. Although in our opinion, Connery wore better. Naturally, this look is one that makes perfect sense for James Bond, as he always seems to find himself in hot countries. And you too can certainly take some inspiration from this for some of your warm weather occasions. Finally, we take a brief pit stop at Q Branch, where Q has got a reminder for us. You'll find a little red button. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Hold on, Q. I thought we were meant to press this red button. Oh, grow up, 007. Today I'm wearing a black cotton wax jacket with a purple v-neck wool sweater, white dress shirt, tan chinos, brown chukka boots, and Fort Belvedere socks in brown and orange stripe. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these. 